So um, tonight's topic is really about um, economic sovereignty. Uh, I'm not sure if you all happened to get on the call last Sunday, but we had quite a few calls on there. Really, really what we were talking about was um, Kwanzaa, doing a Kwanzaa recap, because we recently had a Kwanzaa campaign. We talked about the seventh principle of Imani, and then we also talked about with it being um, January 1, most people come up with New Year's resolutions or determinations or goals, whatever you want to call it, and we kind of build on that and everybody's individual area of focus. So a lot of people's area of focus was economics, which makes perfect sense because a lot of us are definitely on that pursuit to get off the plantation and build uh, not only for ourselves and our family and our community, but for our own nation and race um, because it's very important as our own people to have our own economy and be self-sufficient and independent. So that's really what tonight's call is about. Um, but what we'll start on is we're just going to talk about defining a side hustle, um, what that is, what that entails, and identifying some of the challenges of that. And then we'll pretty much conclude with some action steps to creating uh, economic sovereignty in their, in their life. So um, basically the first question I'll just pose to the family is, you know, how do you define a side hustle? You know, what is your definition of it, and uh, what do you envision that as? Um, does anybody want to uh, chime in on that? Um, Stephanie, what's your definition of a side hustle, Queen? Um, basically, it's an additional way to um, create an income besides your regular nine to five or your eight hour job, whatever shit you may be on. Exactly, exactly. It's just an additional stream of income. Now, would you consider a side hustle just like a part-time job? Would you would you call it synonymous, or what would you say the main difference is between that? Um, yeah, it's like a part-time job, um, but some people have side hustles where they make money even when they sleep. So um, mm -hmm. I guess if you're effective, um, you can have it, like, coincide with your regular job, but you have to get it off the ground first, which is a challenge. Mm -hmm. True indeed, true indeed. Uh, Mike, what's your definition of a side hustle thing? Do you agree with Stephanie? Would you say a side hustle is, like, maybe just getting another part-time job, or uh, what's your thoughts on that, man? Mike, you there? Hello? Look like Mike may take it. Mike, if you uh, if you want to participate, make sure you take your phone off. We we want to definitely hear from you. So yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna continue building on that. So basically, the main difference, in my opinion, on what a side hustle is and what a part time job is, a side hustle is more so like your vocation, right? It's your calling or uh, the work that you do because you feel deeply, uh, you have a deep connection to it, an attraction to it. Um, it's like your talent. And uh, there was a video. There was a video that I was watching earlier this week um, by Dr. Miles Monroe um, on YouTube called "Understanding Your Purpose in Life." I definitely encourage you all to, uh, to check that out if you have an opportunity to. But um, essentially, what that what he was talking about was the difference. What we're talking about today is between your job and your work, or your part time mm -hmm. or full time job and your side hustle. Uh, sometimes your side hustle is your passion. Mm. So a lot of people are passionate about music or they're passionate about writing or right. they're passionate about their sewing. A lot of people have a side hustle that includes their passion that can grow into something that um, at some point can, can filter into their whole life and their life purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. I say, well said, Queen. And that's essentially... The, the difference between your side hustle and your work. So really what your side hustle is or what you, what you work to do, you work to basically um, get paid. That's what you get paid to do. What your vocation or what your side hustle is going to be, is that's what, like what you're born to do, right? It's something that you are deeply passionate about. You know, a lot of times we do work and we're good at certain things that we do on the job, but it's not necessarily something that we're passionate about. Another difference mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, your job, part-time, full-time, um, is what gives you finances, but your side hustle is something that's going to give you fulfillment at the end of the day, right? It's giving and you joy then, at the end of the day, yeah. Right, it's going to give you mm -hmm. absolute joy. 
Um, mm-hmm. And then I would say the lastly, last couple of things is like your job is something that you can that you can be fired from, and it's a skill set that you have. Whereas your vocation or your side hustle is something that you can never be fired from, and that's your gift, right? So I would point. say those are, those are the main two differences between what one would consider a job or, uh, you know, part-time, full-time, and what your side hustle or what your vocation is. Does anybody want to build on that or add on that? Um, this is Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, hey yeah. the floor is yours. Because I didn't understand the whole, because you said what's the difference, and I was just thinking about it. I was thinking about it in terms of hours or, I guess, generally, but I actually wrote that down. Um, like this question for myself, how can I use my passion to create income? Um, mm-hmm. Because that's what I think your side hustle is, you know, as well. Um, that's true. Income. I mean, that yeah. your pa- your your passion can create an income for you. It's just, right. you know, channeling. And, you know, some people like to do a business plan. You have to think it through. Right. Mm-hmm. And see what where you can make that impact mm-hmm. for yourself. Right. I say, I say. Anyone else want to build on what Stephanie just said? Or, or add something uh, different to the well, conversation? Well, can I, can, I, can I ask Stephanie what is her side hustle or what does she think it should be or what is her passion? Um, yes. Um, my passion is cooking. Um, one of my really strong ones since I was little. Um, but I'm also going to school for forensic psychology, but I'm a correction officer, so I'm just all over the place. Um, but I'm okay. actually still trying to get my master's for the forensic site, and cooking has always been my passion. So if I were to try anything, it would be something in the realm of cooking. Um, I thought about blogs and stuff like that, but I'm not really sure where I would start. Okay. Well, see, so you, you, you have a question. We're actually going to pose that question to the family in a minute, but thank you for asking that, uh, Cheryl, and thank you mm-hmm. for answering that, Stephanie. Um, mm-hmm. So it looks like we uh, got the techno- technical difficulties figured out on Facebook Live, so we are actually streaming live on Facebook if you want. Um, and then also you can also call in to the Sunday Sessions number, which is 404-448-2002. My name is Brother Jawanza. I'm member 149 of United Black America, and I'm your host, and we have Several callers on the line, uh, Stephanie from Jersey, Mike from San Diego, Chanel from L.A., Gigi in St. Louis, and Cheryl. And basically what we're talking about right now is uh, we're pretty much uh, identifying the difference between your side hustle and a job and your vocation and uh, different things like that. And basically what we just what we just concluded was that the main difference is your job is something that you get paid to do, what gives you finances, it's your skill set. But your side hustle or your vocation is something that you're born to do. It gives you fulfillment, and it's your gift, right? So going forward, something else that I want to ask you all is, what are some of the major challenges that you or you think our people experience when wanting to create a side hustle? What are your thoughts, Pam? Okay, Stephanie, say the question again. You said what are the challenges for what? Yeah, yeah. So the question that I pose to you all is, what are the major challenges challenges that you as an individual or our people collectively experience when wanting to create a side hustle? Well, finance well, the is the first obstacle. One of the, one of the first obstacles is financing. I, I think the mm-hmm. first obstacle, at, right, let me, is understanding what your direction is, and then mm-hmm. the second is Finances, the money. What do you What do you need to to get your build your business up and off the ground? Mm-hmm. I say, who is that? Was that Was that Cheryl? Was that you? Sue? That was Cheryl. Cheryl from New York. Cheryl from NY. Well said. And I feel like I agree. A lot of people, you know, they know. So for the first part, what you said, understanding a direction. A lot of times, people don't even understand themselves. So how can I say I'm just going to go out and take a leap of faith? and work for myself when I don't even know what I want to do. However, you have others that are more mature and developed and knowing who they are as themselves, have identified their gift, not so much their skill, but their gift. And their, But the major challenge is finances. How am I going to upstart that? And how am I going to 
accumulate income. Is that what you were talking about, Cheryl, as far as challenges and finances? I think so. Okay. Yes. Because some businesses don't take a lot to start up. I mean, you see a lot of people, like in New York, you might see some vendors selling in the summertime ices on the side of the, you know, on the on the street when it's really hot. A lot of people mm-hmm. go over there and buy those ices. So mm-hmm. what does it take for you to get a cart and sell your wares? What kind of permits do you need um, for Stephanie if she sells hot dogs? I'm, I'm just saying, you know, what does she right. need to do to be out there to to sh- show the world what she does? Right. I said, yo, so and Stephanie, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, so I was going to actually pose a question back to Stephanie because you were mentioning something that you were passionate about when Cheryl asked you was cooking. So if mm-hmm. you know you wanted to establish your side hustle or your your side business in cooking, what would be the major challenge of establishing that or getting that started? Um, I, I agree with that was Cheryl. I think right that said the direction. Yes. You know? mm. Yes, I agree with that because you have to understand exactly. I guess from what point you're going to come from, like a blog selling dinners, um. Mm-hmm. Catering, you know, how are you going to do this? I mean, I like to do any part of that, but you have to do baby steps um, first. And mm-hmm. I put, I think, like, time management drives mm-hmm. to even do it because you all say, well, I'm going to do that one day, I'm going to do this one day, but we never actually put it into motion um, for whatever mm-hmm. reason that is. You know, because maybe we feel like we're overwhelmed for the work or kids or whatever. That's true. Yeah, the balance, all the ba- how to balance everything. Right. I get frustrated too with you know I have a my own business with a, I'm in business with my husband and then I have my my side passions and it's like a time management key is key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also want to hear from uh, if you if you, have, if you happen to join the call a little late, uh, I want to hear from you as well. Introduce your name, where you're from. Right now, we're talking about. Um, what we're talking about right now is uh, what are the major challenges you as an individual or our people collectively experience when wanting to create a side hustle or their own business? So uh, if you haven't had a chance to speak, we'd definitely love to hear from you. Uh, Mention your name and where you're from. Well, this is Cheryl again. One of the things that I I, um, noticed is people are unprepared. So, for Mm -hmm. instance, if I need someone, you know, I happen to be in the real estate business and I I repair apartments and and I have to send someone over to maybe put up sheetrock or something like that. And so if I'm looking for extra help, it seems to be hard to find someone who has a basic driver's license. Um, I also kind of want to build on that as well. One of the things that I believe is one of the major challenges, um, you know, to to our people in establishing a side hustle I would say is fear, right? And um, fear can be broken down as an acronym as false evidence appearing real, right? And really what fear is a direct relation to is one of the nine weapons of white supremacy, which is miseducation. Um, Cheryl mentioned um, a lack of preparation, and sometimes that means knowledge, right? You might be miseducated as far as what the correct steps are, and to establishing that side hustle. Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about how there's a lot of things that you can do out here um, that doesn't take a lot of money. You can create a social media account. You can do a lot of different things depending on what your area of focus is that doesn't require a lot of money but requires time and direction, right? So that miseducation of not knowing the proper steps or not being disciplined enough to do your own research and find out what those steps are, I believe is a major challenge. Um, and something that uh, that I also read recently, I'm, I'm showing this on Facebook Live, but there's a book called The Science of Sciences and the Science in Sciences by African Creation Energy. And they talk a little bit about applying the scientific method to solving a lot of the problems that you have in your life. And on page uh, 137 of the book, they talk a little bit about um, experimentation, Right and how that applies to resolving your problems. And it talks about that fear. And it says that fear can also be due to real evidence or real experimental evidence, which is why many people fear putting their hypothesis of, let's say, uh, starting their own side hustle 
to the test because they believe that they might fail. They know in their heart that they haven't done the preparation that it takes. So there's a fear that, you know what, I'm not ready to do it or I might not succeed if I go ahead and do it because what it also goes on to say is that experimentation is great for the hypotheses that are correct and dreadful for the hypotheses that are incorrect. So if you're really true to yourself and you're really passionate about your vocation or your side hustle, it's up to you to take accountability, to do the research that you need to do, and take the action steps that you need to take in order to make sure that your side hustle succeeds. Because the main objective is to not so much depend on the dominant society to provide for your quality of life, but to rely on self. That's what self-sufficiency is all about. Um, so I'm going to take a, a couple callers off mute, um, and I also want to hear your thoughts on what I just said. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, if you haven't had a chance to, to speak, we'd love to hear from you. So what are your thoughts, fam? To add to what you're saying as far as the fear, um, now one of the biggest issues in our community, what Marcus Garvey said, is that we're so disorganized. And mm -hmm. that catapults into every arena, whether it's economics or like what she was saying, getting a proper workers that actually know what they're doing. And my thing is that at, there was a time when it was plentiful amounts of black entrepreneurs. Now it's not the case. And so that fear connects to the fact that you don't see someone that looks like you that owns businesses. Usually it's someone that's Asian or Arab or white or, you know, so this, this makes our people feel that they can't be successful in that because that's not what, what's known to them. That's not what they see. And so my, what I was promoting, I wasn't on this call for last Sunday, but mm -hmm. um, you were saying that you guys were speaking about Kwanzaa, and one of the days of Kwanzaa is, is um, pretty much about, about supporting each other. And so... Mm -hmm. That's the biggest issue that I feel within our community is that we don't support each other, which is also the this organization. We have to support each other's business. Like, I make it my business to not shop anywhere that's not black-owned. And I call and I ask, and a lot of times they get, some people get annoyed that I'm asking. And I even go as far as when I ask, well, is it black family-owned, as in the white, the wife is black as well? Because a lot of the black-owned businesses is owned by a black man, and he's married to someone else. And I don't know if anyone follows the teachings of Dr. Umar Johnson, but even he explains that if you're married to someone else, especially if you're a man, a black man married to someone that's not black, the women usually outlive their husband, and therefore that money stays in their community. The, the wife is not going to go shop black. She's going to shop amongst her own people. So your money is going over there. So we have to understand that that our dollar, that our euro, that our pound, our currency is so powerful and that we are like the backbone of of commerce for around the world. And if we take that money and invest it into each other's business, it would make a change. Like immediately they would have to make a change. You won't have this genocide against us because we now have the bargaining chip, which is money. And so um, I really feel that, that this is something that needs to be, like, knocked over people's head as much as possible, that you need to buy black. Yes, it's easier to go to Walmart. Yes, it's easier to go to wherever. But these same places do not support us. Walmart is known for a fact that one of the boys got killed in Walmart. Walmart did nothing about it. He had a toy gun in his hand and got killed. They don't care. You know, McDonald's doesn't care. We're, we, we're the most ethnic, 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 ethnic group to spend our money with McDonald's. We spent like $300 million, uh, last year with McDonald's. We have you seen anything about McDonald's helping the black community. So I think that needs to be preached and knocked into every black person's head that we have to spend our dollar, our euro, our pound with our own people. And and doing that, that's going to make more business amongst ourselves because our children will see that, oh, this is, these are black owners. It's not just Arabs mm -hmm. and Asians owning. So that's I can a good point. make a business. Yeah, very so, good point because our, our dollar used to, in the in, at the beginning of this century or the last century, used to turn like 
10 times in, in, in black communities across the United States. Now it's only like one. Yeah, it's only one. So, yeah, but yeah, Jewish I mean, is 13 times of them. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. where, yeah. like, where did the distrust come? Really, the distrust mm-hmm. should be toward the other people because they're the ones that came down and did urban renewal and tore down whole communities because they knew that eventually the economic power would become very strong in those communities, Atlanta, in in Memphis, Tennessee, all across the country, we we were building ourselves up. But right. they they found a way to destroy by using urban renewal to build, um, you know, big high rise apartments, uh, low income apartments that have become traps for us. Right. Mm-hmm. And so to further build, well, I believe that was Stephanie and Shirt I was speaking, but to further build on what Stephanie was saying about one of the principles of Kwanzaa that pretty much promotes cooperative economics, and that's Ujamaa. That, right? no, that was Chanel. Yeah. That was Chanel talking. That was Chanel. My fault. I didn't mean to say it's wrong with that. <laughs> but, yeah, that was Chanel. She was talking about <laughs> She was talking about one of the principles in Kwanzaa that talks about cooperative economics, and that's Ujamaa. And mm-hmm. uh, we had a 2016 Kwanzaa campaign, and pretty much every day we had members that either went on Facebook Live or wrote a 500-word article or more that talked about and defined what these principles mean and how to apply them in our daily lifestyles, not just during Kwanzaa, but 365, right? So mm-hmm. that's really what I would say is the next challenge is. How do we trust one another and um continue to make sure that we circulate our dollars within our community before they go outside of our community. And we'll, we'll, we'll continue to build on some of those steps. Um, but before we get to that, I just want to ask if we have anyone that's on the call currently, uh, do you have a side hustle right now currently? And if so, explain what that is. Talk a little bit about who your target market is, how you attract customers, how you generate income, and some of the challenges that you experience. So if you're on Facebook Live, we'd love to hear from you. Or if you're on the call and haven't had a chance to speak, we'd love to hear from you as well. So I'll, I'll go ahead and go. I'll begin first. And then if someone wants to chime in on what their side also is, we'd love to hear from you. So something that I kind of do on my part-time is I sell sneakers, right? And um, I do so. My main target market is like the sneaker community. And that's from, like, ages 18 all the way up until at least 30 or maybe more. And so um, my target market outside of that age range is mostly domestic. Anywhere here in the United States, I'm based out of Washington, D.C., um, or, you know, shipping throughout the world because there's just a huge sneaker community outside that's worldwide. And a lot of the way that I advertise and market is, of course, online via social media, Twitter, Facebook, um, as well, and then using some of the other platforms that are available to, that help, helps me sell my products. So that would be like eBay, um, OfferUp, um, and uh, Facebook. And they all have their respective advantages and disadvantages. Um, and the, basically the main way I accumulate income is through bids and auctions or mm-hmm. just make or I basically offer up that product for a fixed price. And then um, the way I accumulate the revenue would be through um, PayPal. So it's all electronic. Um, if I'm using eBay, if I'm using OfferUp, um, then it's hand-in-hand cash transactions, which is good. Um, so it actually has uh, some pros and cons to it. Um, one of the challenges that I face mainly with that type of side hustle is, number one, buyers not following through with their payment. And that's regardless of if they be black, white, Hispanic, Asian, um, they might, you know, finish bidding on a product and then they might not fall through with the transaction. Or um, another challenge I might face once I go through with the transaction, eBay may take out their percentage of it. So that takes away from my pockets. But the great thing about OfferUp is it's more so you're interacting with people that are local. So the transactions are more cash and hand-to-hand. So really good tax-free. So that's just one of the ways that I use, um, you know, one of the side hustles that I do it's very passive. I don't have to do a lot of work. I don't have to clock in. I don't answer anybody. It's very passive income, and it's electronic, so it has its pros and its cons. Obviously, I have other side that I would love to do one day, but that's just an example of one thing that I do. Um, we have Donna Moody. What's up, Queen? She just uh, logged in on Facebook Live, and she said she actually has uh, – she tutors Spanish. 
she uses a website and word of mouth um, pretty much uh, to market her course. And her target market is um, all ages, K through 12, as well as adults. So there's so many different ways. And thank you for uh, contributing, Donna, to the conversation. There's so many different ways that you can establish your side hustle. A lot of people don't even think about how many different ways that they can, you know, accumulate passive income. And we're going to talk about that a little later. So you heard about mine. You heard about Donna's. Does anyone else have a, a side hustle that they would like to share and, you know, and build with, with the family on? Yeah, peace. Peace. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, go ahead, okay. Sam. We haven't heard from you yet. Is that, is that Muhammad? Yeah, this is Muhammad. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, um, one of my side hustles, uh, I do graphic design. Mm-hmm. So, uh, um, yeah. Uh, um, pardon me. I didn't hear uh, the other question that you asked, but I know, yeah, one of my side hustles is graphic design. Respect, King. And so to kind of further build on that, can you talk about um, who your target market is, uh, how you attract customers, how you generate income, and what's some of the challenges that you experience with graphic design? Uh, yeah, um, my target audience will probably be uh, artists. I would say artists is probably one of them. Well, mm-hmm. that's the most that I would use as artists, music artists. Uh, Basically, through uh, doing customer service for them, basically, whatever needs that they want, whether it's flyers, business cards, covers. Yeah, whatever. so when you're, when you, once you find out, once your target market approaches you or you approach your target market, uh, what's the whole process between how you acquire revenue from it? Uh, do you create the design first and then they pay you, or like what's that, what's that whole process like? Actually, yes, uh, we both speak on what it is that they need. Mm-hmm. Then first they they this this should be a a, a half upfront uh, cost before I start anything because more so when I interact it's more like an online based uh, interaction I have with them so mm-hmm. just uh, just in case that if they don't want the design uh, I don't do the work just for nothing you know what I mean when it's fully completed so it's more right. uh, I start off with a half upfront. They like the design, then they pay the full, I mean, the rest of the, the, the payment. And uh, that's basically, I send them the, the, all the files, full design that they that they uh, that they needed. Well done. That's what's up, fam. And then, so, like, what's some of the challenges that you face with that hustle? I mean, I know, I mean, I'm sure there's a huge target market and demand for graphic design from websites mm-hmm. to flyers to um, everything. Um, so what's some of the challenges that you face for those that may not be familiar with that hustle? Um, say, for instance, they need, they want to cover and they want to have their pictures on there. Sometimes the pictures are not full quality, high quality. They may give you maybe a, a three megapixel quality uh, picture. It probably wouldn't go well with the, the rest of the cover. I mean, that's one of mm-hmm. the challenges. I mean, a lot of times it's more of tedious work, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the other challenges. Uh, and I mean, I guess mm-hmm. that's something. That's the only thing I could think of right now. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, and everybody's challenges are different when it comes to the side hustles, right? So for those that are tuning in on Facebook Live, they may have not heard it. We just heard from our brother Muhammad, who had also created the flyer for the Sunday session. So shout out to you, King. Um, and he was just talking about his side hustle for uh, flyer design, so uh, or graphic design. I'm sorry. So the target market is mostly artists, but as you can imagine, anyone that needs a particular event, um, posted that needs some type of visual presentation, they highlight graphic designs or graphic artists like Muhammad as well. He talked about I uh, guess the 50% cost up front. You know, collaborates with the customer client, and then once the business is concluded. Um, then the remaining balance is paid, and you just talked about the challenges of that, whether it being you know just back and forth about details and different things of that nature. So, thank you for your contribution, King. And we also heard from Donna about her um, being a tutor in Spanish, how that works out for her. You heard from me how I sell sneakers online. So, basically, what you can kind of gain from all three of us is that we use technology to our advantage. So many times our people are just using it to just you know behave in all types of inappropriate behavior. 
I know you might have heard about the Soldier Boy Challenge and Chris Brown and Soldier Boy about to fight over some petty, stupid stuff when they could be talking about ways that they have used their side hustle to create money. So we have to, you know, get on code and establish a code of conduct of how we're going to use technology to, you know, further enhance and improve our lifestyle. So uh, yeah, before that's I move a, on, that's a That's a good point because um, I didn't jump in, but my side hustle is writing. And I, I've written um, one book that's out, that, and I like to go to different um, events and have a table and have my book out there and, and mm-hmm. talk about my book and sell my book. So um, one of the challenges is getting out to enough event, events and try to build up a name as an author. That's a challenge, so it's mm-hmm. recognizable. So, um, But technology was one of the things that I had kind of ignored, and I mm-hmm. took um, – some time to learn how important Facebook is and Twitter is, and so now I have a Facebook account and I have a Twitter account, and I, mm-hmm. I believe some of my sales come from those areas, but I'm, I, it's hard to track. Respect. Was that was that you, Sister Cheryl? Was that you, Queen? Say that again. Was that Cheryl? Yes, it's Cheryl. I'm sorry. Yes. Cheryl. So yeah, that's Cheryl family, and she's an author. And what's the name of your book? My book is called African Venus. African Venus, well yes. said. And so, it's it's, it's um, actually a statue that was created in the 1800s, and you can Google it and see um, the statue of this African woman um, that basically was nameless, and no, mm-hmm. one, no one knows her name, where she really came from, so I wrote a book about her. Well said. And see, that's a, that's a beautiful example of using your vocation or something that you are – that you're attracted to, that you have a talent for and affinity, and using that as your side hustle, fam. And so that's really what a side hustle and a vocation is all about, doing mm-hmm. what you, what your gift is, what gives you fulfillment, and what you were born to do to establish economic independence. And so as you heard from her challenge, just like a lot of ours, sometimes it's using the resources that we have or that we don't know that we have to our advantage to in, in, um, to expand our tribe and our target market and have business come to us. And sometimes that's up to us to become more well-educated about some of those things because with technology, it's always changing, right? So whether that means a new course or uh, joining an organization or whatever the case may be, you don't got to get a degree in it, but maybe get get your certifications up, things of that nature, and then applying that to yourself as opposed to go working for the dominant society and have them um, determine what your worth is and how much you should be paid and putting a cap on your salary and taking up of your time and your valuable resources as well. So we have a little, almost 20 minutes left, so I want to keep on moving, but it's a lot of good contribution, and I'm glad everybody is participating. I definitely want to say what up to Brother Asad Malik that just joined in on Facebook Live. He is the king of side hustling, so we definitely, and and establishing your own side enterprises, so we want to hear from you too, King. But um, the next topic I want to move on to, fam, um, are action steps to creating economic sovereignty, all right? So um, for the first-time callers that, um, or I'm sorry, to the first-time people who are enrolled in the Sunday, not the Sunday session, but the work-study program, one of the things that you're going to learn about is establishing your side hustle. I believe that's in week three, maybe. Um, Mm -hmm. And so you might be um, getting an early start on that with the Sunday sessions call. So um, basically what we're going to do is identify the six major business models and then I'm going to ask you all, which model does your potential side hustle, if you don't have one already or if you have one already, which model does that fall under? Then I'm going to ask you to give an example of someone or a business that is doing what you aspire to do, all right? So mm-hmm. number one, if you're tuning in on Facebook Live, I still have the notes from my work-study course. So mm-hmm. just to let you know, I'm really about that life. Um, so the first uh, model is the merchant model, right? Um, and that's basically where you sell goods and services. Um, and that's basically what I was doing with eBay, OfferUp, how I utilize Facebook and things of that nature. And my good or my product are sneakers. And uh, that's what I sell and that's what I make income from, right? Um, the next model is the brokering model, which uh, brings buyers and sellers together, uh, profiting for a charge or on top of a sales price, okay? 
Um, the third model is the advertising and affiliate model, also known as the AA model. Um, that's where you produce content, uh, build an audience, and let merchants sell to them, right? Um, and then you also have the triple L model, which is wait, wait, lead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is Stephanie. Can you repeat um the advertising and affiliate one more time? Yeah, I can. So uh, I'm gonna say it slow. So the advertising and affiliate, which is also called the double A model, is um, so the basic definition of that is where you produce content and you build an audience, okay. and then you let merchants sell to them, right? So that would be like Amazon, for example, right? Um, and we also, with United Black America, we have an affiliate program where you can sell our products. We give you a link, you sell our products, and you get paid for it, right? So that's basically what affiliate marketing is. And we'll, de we'll go a little bit deeper into that on the conclusion of the call. Um, and the fourth... Um, the fourth model, business model that you have is a triple L, and that's called lease, landlord, and license. So that's where you build something or you buy an asset and you charge others for the temporary use of that asset. Um, so an example of that, so I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, fam, and so there was a, um, a facility called The Hoop. It used to be like one of the most popping areas for all everybody that played basketball, women, Males, all that good stuff. And it was open 24-7. You go in there, you pay a little fee, $5, and you could go in there for open run. Um, but they also hosted clinics. They hosted um, tournaments. Um, so it was just, a, in my opinion, it was a great economic model um, as far as the lease, landlord, and license where you build a facility and you charge people for temporary use of that asset. So that might be basketball tournaments, basketball clinics, basketball leagues, or just general open run. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next model, and that's subscription in the membership model, which offers a product or service on a weekly, monthly, or yearly basis. And lastly, there's the freemium model where you build a platform and let users use it for free or and you charge extra for services. So I'm going to give you a good example of that. There is a website or a blog uh, by a good, good childhood friend of mine um, called CoolYoungHistory.com. I definitely encourage you all to check it out. And essentially, it's about um, a brother and sister that got married, and they basically they're on an indefinite honeymoon. Um, they didn't do anything super fancy or expensive. Got married in Vegas, and basically they've been touring the world or traveling the world for the last, I believe, three years. Um, they started off in Central America, then traveled up to Europe, um, Northern Africa, things of that nature. And their side hustle is um, they have the blog which is the, um, the freemium, Cool Young History, and they charge extra for the services, such as uh, they have um, a course called Passport to Passive Income and the Light Bulb Effect. And really what it teaches you how to do is how to earn passive income, right? So the blog is where you give the content away for free, and the extra service which you charge for is the Passport to Passive Income uh, classes, right? So... Those were just a couple of examples of some of the different um, business models that there are, some of the businesses that I look up to and the people that I look to, up to that are actually out here doing it, black-owned businesses, um, and just different things that I aspire to. So I want to open up the, the floor to the family as far as, uh, you know, what your side hustle is um, or if, you, if you're still trying to figure that out, which model does that, um, does that fall under? And if you can give an example of someone or a business that's, um, that's doing that. Um, I think um, the so if you're a writer, you know mm -hmm. the, one of the one of the ways that you want to what one of the things that you want to do is build an audience. So I think um, mm -hmm. Amazon. You mentioned Amazon. They are yep. a big player in this market. But the problem with Amazon is is that you know if someone buys their book through Amazon, let's say. You mm -hmm. might get a small commission, but you don't know who that person is. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, you can't stay in touch with that person um, and and grow your personal um, database of, of people who are interested in what you write about. Mm -hmm. So, it, it's important to capture that information. That's why Amazon is such a big player because it can capture those people and keep sending them notices and letters and things like that. 
Um, so I think the advertising model will, would apply to um, people who are writers. Well said. Yeah, that double A, that double A model, uh, advertising affiliate market is booming right now. And the mm-hmm. way, the reason why it's booming is because of technology. There's so many yeah. different ways that you can utilize it to get to grow your tribe or to grow your following or your audience. And um, you have Amazon that can do that. You have Instagram that can do that for you. Uh, I think Kindle as well. Um, also, I think you have uh, what is that? The, uh, the Apple Store, the Google, the Google Play Store. You have so many mm-hmm. different platforms that you can push your product out, and you never know who's looking at it. These people are always looking for really good books to read, um, really good audio books. So that's another way to kind of diversify uh, your product with the affiliate um, and advertising. I'm sorry, affiliate and advertising model. Um, so yeah, well said, Queen. I'm going to give y'all um, some feedback from our Facebook Live people. I don't want to act like I'm forgetting about them neither. We have Alex Prime that chimed in. He said, peace, fam. He does not have a side hustle yet, or she does not have a side hustle yet. Um, however, um, they are listening so uh, that they can create one. So what we're, the, the, the build that we're having right now is actually helping people, as you can see. Um, he also said, or she also said, that uh, they want to, so that I can afford the work study course here with the Pan African Alliance. So um, that's one of the reasons why we're having this call. Um, this is a, a subject that you're actually going to learn about in the work study course, where you're going to have two hours to really go in on each of these models and learn more about it. Um, so this is a good introduction to that, and it's also sharpening our tools and our resources that for people that have already gone through the work study course, and um, and we're just further building on how to utilize these different models. We also have Chris Archie. What's up, Chris? Peace King. Um, he's from Maryland. What's up, DMV Love? I'm out here in DC, and he said he's definitely trying to get down with the movement. Definitely send us a message so we can let you a little bit know know, know a little bit more about our organization, uh, the work study course, and how to join our organization. What's going on? Um, yeah. Um, well, I do graphic design, so I guess I will be selling services. I'll be under um, the merchant model. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and he's a dope it. graphic designer too. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> he is. I just mentioned that he. Uh, so, brother Asad, is that you on the line? Do we still have you on the line? Yeah, yeah. This is Asad. What's going on, family? Peace, peace. We want we want to hear from you as well. Uh, we want to talk about. I mean, you have several side hustles. Is there one that pretty much sticks out to you as what's been the most successful for you in the past, or what you see is going to be the merchant or the business model for the future? I uh, want to hear some of your thoughts. Yeah, most definitely. Well, for starters, uh, we're talking about group economics and everything that we discuss when we take an economic approach to the problems of our people. We've got to do this together, right? This isn't something that you can create off in your own corner. You need the support of the community if you're going to be successful. You need the feedback of the community if you're going to be successful. What's happened in our community in the past typically has been brothers and sisters either steal someone else's idea or they come up with their own idea, but they are too nervous or wary about bringing that idea into the light. What I want our community to start thinking about is how we can all come up together using group economics. And group economics is not donations. Group economics is not network marketing. Group economics is I produce a product or a service, and you support my product or my service as long as you need it in exchange for me doing the same thing for you, family. That's how we build economies, Mm -hmm. which is why in this organization, United Black America, we've started not just producing products and services for the brothers and sisters in the community, but we've also created an affiliate program. This way, if you support us by selling our products and services, we can then compensate you financially. So that's how we all come up together, family. If you're producing a product or a service, and that's something that the community needs, then we are more than willing to support you and vice versa, right? That's how we create an economy. Now, in terms of the one side hustle that I have that stands out the most, it's absolutely my web services business. It is well, it started off as a merchant model, it became a subscription model, and it became a number of other business models that I've applied to that. But basically what I do is I help black entrepreneurs build their online empire. I was able to build my online empire from scratch several times, and so I teach and I provide goods and services for brothers and sisters to do the exact same thing. And so I say all that to say this. Building legacy web services has taught me that the only way that you all are going to come up is by truly becoming interested in helping other brothers and sisters in the community. 
If you're in this thing to make money, family, you're not going to be successful. And you can go into any other sector and make money, right? But if you're coming into this community with a good and a service and it solves a problem and you are truly helping brothers and sisters out with whatever it is that you're producing, then you will be successful. That's the secret to success, all right? We can get into business systems. We can talk about business models. We can talk about product validation. We can talk about how to qualify your idea. We can talk about keyword research. We can talk about sourcing products through Alibaba and all these other things. But at the end of the day, if what you are doing is not helping people get better or solving a problem that they're having, you will not be successful, family. So go back, look at your side hustles, and ask yourself that question. Am I helping someone solve a serious problem that they're having? If the answer is no, you're not done yet. I don't know how y'all feel about that. I would love to hear some feedback. Y'all might think I'm full of it, but I'm being 100% when I say that the only way that we're going to be successful is by helping one another solve our problems and in the end, or as a result of that, helping everyone become successful. Nah, well said, Sam. And we got about a little less than 10 minutes on the call, so there's a couple things that I wanted to conclude with before I open the uh, the floor back up to the family. And Asai mentioned uh, a, a huge thing earlier when he when he was building, fill a void. I had that written down in one of my notes from the Passport to Passive Income class. So when you're developing that side hustle, that idea in your psyche, fill that void. Right? You know what 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 is the community missing? What am I missing in my life? But where are not so much what am I missing? Because you can't pay yourself so much. You need customers. You need to try. But what are they interested in? And how can you fill the void of their ne- or their need or the necessity? So when you're developing that idea, you can start by going to Pan African Alliance and getting and downloading your time mastery system. And what you'll see in that TMS is a, a worksheet that talks about developing your SMART goals. I'm showing that on the uh, Facebook Live feature right now. So that SMART goal, the acronym is specific, measurable, attractive, realistic, and timed. Right. So specific mm-hmm. means as detailed as you can possibly imagine, right? Include the weight, the size, the color, the feeling of that specific idea, right? Measurable would be um, how far away are you from that goal? Be And then that leads to being, make the goal be attractive. Don't let this be a mundane task. Be excited about it, right? It should be motivating enough to pull you forward. The reason behind what you are trying to do goes back to the vocation that we were talking about, right? And it's important for your goal to be attractive since you won't always have the motivation to just do it, right? Um, That also leads to it being realistic. Only you know what is in your reach and what your limits are, right? And then lastly, make sure that SMART goal is timed, right? Your goals will fill the amount of time that you give them, and it prevents uh, procrastination um, and filling your ass. So to give you an example of what a SMART goal looks like in the area of economics, because you can use these SMART goals in all areas of your life and elements of life. But since we're talking about economics, um, let's say, for example, um, you want to start your own business. That's a week goal. But a SMART goal would be on August 1st, I will launch my barbershop or my hair salon for the sisters out there on the corner of 5th and Market Street with six barbers or six salon artists and a three a thirty thousand dollar investment because owning my own business is the only way to set myself free from working from others. So you all heard how detailed that was. So that's how all of our ideas on our side hustle should be when we define them, right? Um and then lastly, also wanna say, give me one second, um utilizing the side talked about this as well, utilize the resources that United Black America has to help generate passive income for you from our affiliate marketing program and job creation strategies to employ other members of our organization. So we have the Ujama Council, which their main task is this, what we're talking about right here. How do we create jobs? How do we come up with projects that not only our community or our organization can benefit from, but our community can benefit from, all right? So we're providing you all with resources and strategies and logic and reasoning, proven things that help create success and sovereignty for our people, and it's up to us individually and as an organization to make sure that we see it through. Um, So we have about five minutes left on the call. If you didn't have a chance or you did have a chance to speak, I want to hear your closing thoughts or if you wanted to contribute or build to anything that uh, that you recently heard. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace, King. Is this DJ? Yes, DJ. Go ahead, King. Love to hear from you. 
Oh, well, um, man, you know, I'm just, like I said, it's a beautiful thing. And, um, I, uh, you know, just honored, you know what I'm saying, to be a part of something so best, so special and beautiful and to actually be living, you know, in, um, these days and time, you know, um, technology, technology is so advanced and so, uh, uh, you know, uh, how can I put it? Um, to our, to our advantage, you know what I'm saying? Our advantage, I look back and I don't really see, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, you know what I'm saying? You know, in history, a lot of our ancestors being able to have, the resources that, uh, you know, we have today, um, you know, so you know, just being around and thankful, you know, to the um, foundation for us, you know, and, uh, you know, just to be able to take uh, advantage of the, you know, the affiliate program like you were talking about, you know, and, uh, you know, being able to, um, you know, utilize that, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, to propel our, uh, you know what I'm saying, families forward, you know what I'm saying, our, our culture, our society, you know, using the internet to basically just, you put this big melting pot of, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know what I'm saying, African uh, conscious thought, black conscious thought together and uh, propel it forward. You know, it's it's beautiful. It's, it's it's beautiful. So, you know what I'm saying, like I said to everybody out there, you know what I'm saying, one love, I love you, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, you are literally, you're making history right now with what we're doing every day. So just keep up the good work. I say, family, well said, and thank you for your contribution. And you actually mentioned some good things. Utilizing technology to our advantage. I spoke about that earlier. Not engaging in inappropriate behavior and childish petty hashtags and trending topics, but how can we assemble and organize and practice group economics? I saw um, an account earlier, to, I, mean, I think this week, a brother, uh, he was a graphic design artist, and he posted um, on, his, uh, on his Instagram post, tag a black lawyer. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a really creative and innovative way to spread information using technology about black lawyers in our specific area, um, whether it be geographically in America or internationally, right? And then you can connect right there on Instagram with them. You never know what you might need that black lawyer for. So, um, and then also kind of going back to what he was talking about, um, you know, during the Harlem Renaissance era and Black Wall Street and Roosevelt and so many different other moments in time uh, where black people were thriving economically as we also know, um, with the weapon of war, right, or a weapon of murder, uh, the dominant white society has killed us for just being self-sufficient, whether it's dropping bombs out of the sky or, uh, you know, burning our businesses down. And so we have this opportunity to use technology to our advantage where they can't necessarily shut everything down so easily. So, exactly. uh, But we also can't be so complacent with one side hustle. Right, it's, it's very imperative in this technological era that we are very diverse, diverse in our streams of income. Right, so whether that be brick and mortar or that be going online, having that digital platform. Um, so uh, we have about two minutes left. Um, would love to continue building with y'all, but uh, I'm very respectful of your time, and I thank you for uh, joining the call. Uh, I want to say thank you uh, to everybody that joined in on Facebook Live from Aaron to Sister Donna, who said, thank you so much for this. She's blessed to be a part of this family. And she is from South Carolina, and she says, peace and blessings to everybody. Hotel Queen. Uh, Rhonda Brown, that said, thank you um, as well. Uh, Chris, who logged on. Um, Alex, uh, also aside. And I also want to say thank you to everybody who joined in on the call as well. Stephanie, Mike, Chanel, Gigi, Sherelle, uh, Cheryl, I'm sorry, Muhammad. Anyone else that may have joined that I didn't really get your name, uh, thank you, Kimo. He just logged in on Facebook Live. And so if you haven't already, go to unitedblackamerica.com. Learn more about our organization, our work-study course. Um, practice group economics by purchasing our United Black America pins. Purchase, purchase yourself a RBG flag <laughs> from, from us, which is right behind my wall as well. Um, but other than that, I just want to say um, peace, family. You all have a good night and a good week. I look forward to following up with you all next Sunday at same time, same number. Peace. That's all right. Good night. Thank you. One love. One love. One love.